Central High School from Olympia Fields, who enter this game with a record of 29 wins and one loss. Introducing the head coach in his 12th season, Ron Brower. And now the players. Number 15, a 5'11 junior, Robert Respris. Number 25, a 6'1 senior, Tony Parks. Number 33, a 5'9 senior, Greg Glaze. Number 43, a 6'2 junior, Ronnie Jamison. Number 45, a 6'4 junior, Dwayne Dowell. Number 53, a 5'11 junior, Steve Billingsley. And number 55, a 6'3 junior, Mark Murata. And now, the starting lineup for the Olympians of Rich Central. At one forward, a six-foot junior, 35, Keith Gill. Gill, the brother of Kendall Gill, averaging 12 points and four rebounds a ball game. At the other forward, a 6'2 senior, 21, Charles Warnell. Another Olympian in double figures on the season, averaging 14 a ball game. At center, a 6'2 senior, number 51, Maurice Rayford. He holds down the middle, doesn't score a lot, but he's there on the defense. At one of the guards, a six-foot junior, number 31, Bobby Smith. The key, according to his coach, to this ball game, averaging 14 points a night. And at the other guard, a 6'3 senior, number 13, Kendall Gill. He scores a lot, 21 points a game, six rebounds, an all-stater. Those are the Olympians of Rich Central High School. And now, let's meet the Terriers of Carbondale Community High School, who enter this great game with a record of 21 victories and seven defeats. Introducing the head coach in his 11th season, Doug Woolard. And now the players. Number four, a 5'11 junior, Scott Brigham. Number 10, a 5'10 junior, Brad Dillard. Number 20, a 6'2 junior, Aaron Stearns. Number 22, a 6' foot junior, Tony Austin. Number 24, a 6'1 sophomore, Mark Diamond. Number 30, a 6'1 junior, Bert Simon. And number 44, a 6'5 junior, Chris Hartlieb. And now the starting lineup for the Terriers of Carbondale. At one forward, a 5'10 senior, 32, Clayton Greer. One of four Terriers in double figures, averaging 13 a game. At the other forward, a 6'3 senior, number 15, Stacy Corthen. This young man leads the team in rebounding, averaging seven a night. At center, a 6'2 senior, number 52, William Cobb. You can count on him for 10 points and five rebounds a ball game. At one of the guards, a 6'6 senior, number 35, Steve Bardo. This is the man who makes him go. He averages 17 points and five rebounds. And at the other guard, a six-foot senior, number 12, Sean Curtis. The playmaker, he averages four points a ball game. Those are the Terriers of Carbondale Community High School. And now the officials for tonight's game, Tom Kleinschmidt of Chicago and Bill Loudy of Frankfurt. Rich Central and Carbondale are coming up next. One of your network sponsors is the American Dairy Association of Illinois.
That is where these teams have traveled from. Olympia Fields Ridge Central representing the SICA South Conference out of Cook County, Carbondale, the South Seven Conference out of Jackson County. And gentlemen, kind of interesting that the two tallest men on both teams are playing in the guard court. The tip is controlled. Down they go. The shot is up and not there. Rebound back up and it is not there either. But finally, Carbondale gets it to fall and they take a 2-0 lead. Stacy Corthen got on the board early for the Terriers. So working with the basketball is Rich Central. This is Gill. He's short on his first attempt. The ball will be kicked out of bounds by Carbondale. It will belong to Rich Central. Setting the lineups for you again, Rich Central has Kendall Gill and Bobby Smith at the guards, Maurice Rayford at the center, Charles Warnell and Keith Gill at the forward spots. We'll check Carbondale the next time down. With the basketball, that's Bobby Smith over in the corner. Carbondale's in a 3-2 zone. Smith wants a jumper in. He won't get it to fall. Tip is no good by Warnell. And controlled out of there by Carbondale. Maybe, no. Grabbed by Rich Central and then thrown out of bounds. Taking a quick look at the matchups. It is Keith Gill against Greer for Carbondale. Warnell against Corthen at the other forward spot. Then Rayford and Cobb squared off at center. Smith and Bardot at guards along with Gill and Curtis. Rich Central starting out in a 1-2-2, three-quarter court press. John Curtis working the ball for the Terriers, who come in here at 21 and 7. They go right down low, but the ball is batted away. Corpin couldn't hang on, and they lose the basketball as Rich Central will come the other way and try to tie this game at twos. Interesting, guys. The big scorers for each team, Kendall Gill and Steve Bardo, uh, plan to play as teammates at the University of Illinois. Bobby Smith, the guard, averaging 14 points a game, gives it along the baseline, and we've got a whistle and a foul as Gill was trying to drive. That time, Carbondale was in a man-to-man. -man. I think this is what Coach wants to do. He wants to mix up his defenses a little bit between a man-to-man -man and a 3-2 zone. And yes, Keith Gill and Kendall Gill are related. About as close as you can get. They're brothers. Gill will give it up to Smith, and they'll reload the offense again. Gill's looking inside. Warnell is there. He'll power it up and it won't fall. Ball tipped around and grabbed out of there by Stacy Corthen, who leads Carbondale in the rebounding department. Inside they go nicely and that is Stacy Corthen with the second basket of the night as Carbondale jumps out in front 4-0. Great pass inside that time. Almost a steal on the other side. Warnell will pull up and hit it. Charles Warnell gets the first two points in the assembly hall for the Olympians. And now pressure applied, but they break it rather easily. Greer with the basketball in the middle of the court and off the glass too hard. And the ball is picked out of there by Smith. But we talked about an up-tempo game. I don't think you get any more up-tempo than it is so far. I'm getting tired just watching them. Bobby Smith with a nice spin move, and he'll get the hoop. Bobby Smith left his man out by the free throw line with that 360 off the dribble and then got the nice roll. And this is how the ball game was tied at four. And here he comes down the lane. Just put it over the defender's hand. Nice shot. Smith, not all that proficient at the free throw line, 66% on the year. And he really froze Sean Curtis with that spin move. Rebound comes down to Corthen. I'll figure out how many lefties the Rich has. Boy. Everybody else is left-handed. Yeah, Bardot is. They go into the corner to Corthen. They kick it back on the side now. Greer will try. No, he'll give it back to Bardot. That won't go down. Ball is fought for, and Olympians bring it out. Now they have trouble with the dribble. Smith double dribble. Bobby Smith tried to pass it across the lane. Then he saw some defender get in the path. And oftentimes that happens, Coach. You take your eye off the ball, or you're trying to go across the way with it, and you lose the handle. Yeah, plus, I don't know if Bobby's got something on his uh, his left hand there. I don't know if he's got a jam finger or what, but that might have bothered him a little bit. Boy, Bardot is a press breaker, isn't he? At 6 6. They work it down. This is Corthen, and that's too hard as well. Ball is fought for. Getting the basketball is Cobb. It won't fall. And we've got a whistle and a foul against Stacy Corthen. 
for Rich, or I should say for Carbondale. That shot didn't drop, but it seems that Carbondale is getting a good shot every time down. Yeah, they're just they're hitting the glass a little too hard. Yeah, well, that's, I think that's uh, that's nerves. A little uh, too much adrenaline flowing right now. Smith trying to get the ball down low to Warnell, and he did that, but getting in the way. Nice pass inside, though. It was Clayton Greer. Smith looking for somebody. He finds Gill. Carbondale played a man-to-man -man on that out-of-bounds play. That's a little unusual for high school. Bardo checking Gill over on the weak side. Warnell is short on that shot. And with the rebound, another one is Stacy Corthen. And Carbondale is on the run with Sean Curtis. Nice on the 6'6 guard off front. Oh, Curtis tried from 18. Bardo with the rebound. Nice move, but it won't fall. He will go to the foul line there. Well, he's got those long arms. Once he gets in the lane, if it comes out high at all, he's got a good shot for it. Well, that's a nice position to have a big man like that if you can afford it. Because uh, the shot goes up and he's charging in. It's kind of hard to screen somebody out. There you see Doug Wooler, the coach of the Terriers, in his 11th year with this ball club. They were here last year in the Elite Eight, lost in the first round. Bardot will try to put his club up, and he can't. Jim, in the super sectional, uh, Carbondale made 20 field goals, and Bardo made 10 of them. <laughs> yeah, they hit 18 of 23 from the free throw line, and that's what got him here. So Carbondale moves out front by one as both clubs try to get their offenses in gear. 4.24 remaining in the first quarter. 5-4 Terriers. Smith calls out the play. Warnell tried to get it down low, but that was batted away by Stacy Corthen, who was everywhere around that paint. That's why he averages seven rebounds a game, I guess. Smith looking inside for Warnell, who will fire from 10 and back. Charles Warnell. Full court pressure, and Bardot just looks over it and gives it to Curtis. Now a bad pass all the way down, and the Olympians will come the other way. And now it's kicked around, picked up. Down the middle they go to Bardot. Spin move, and what's the call here? I think there'll be a foul out front at the free throw line against Rich Central and make it Bobby Smith. Second team foul on Rich Central. Curtis, as we said at the outset, not a real scoring threat, only averaging four. Now he turns the ball over as they come the other way. And Warnell's progress is halted by Curtis, but not before he picks up a personal foul. That's good control with the ball coming down court. There's a tendency for kids to go a little bit too fast on this, but he got control of the ball and went, went at the correct speed, and he got a nice shot off, and of course, through the foul. They see the body contact. A lot of body. Warnell ran around 70% on the year from the charity stripe. This club leading by one and now two. Jim uh, Carbondale's got Brad Dillard, number 10, a 5'10 junior in the game. And... Sean Curtis gets a rest. He buries them both. It's 8-5. Rich Central. That is Brad Diller with the ball back to Bardell. Across the stripe they go. Breaking the press rather easily so far. In the middle they go. That is... Portman, who couldn't get it to drop, but Bardot has it right back. Dillard wants one, but he can't get it. Bardot, though, along the baseline, too short. It'll come right back out to Dillard. One of the things Coach Willard wanted his kids to do is to attack this, this pressure defense, and they're doing exactly that. They're getting some great shots. Bardot missed the jumper on the wing, but we've got a foul underneath. It looks like it will go against Carbondale. William Cobb with the personal. That's well, his first of the night. This is early in the game to be in the bonus already. Well, you're not kidding. Oh, 
So Charles Warnell, who was at the free throw line just moments ago, is right back there. He drilled him on both ends. Let's see if he can do that again. This one short high for the rebound goes Bardell. Looking on the wing. Oh, the ball is taken away from Cobb on a nice defensive play, but now we've got traveling call against Kendall Gill, who did a nice job of stripping that ball away from Cobb. I think what the official called that time was a double dribble, because he hit the ball when he stole it, and then it, it bounced, and then he, he dribbled it again after picking it up, and that's a double dribble. Both teams trying to get in gear here. 2.53 left in the first quarter. Rich Central leads Carbondale 8-5. One of your network sponsors in Canada. Jim Albrecht along with Frank Bassoni and Bill Geiston. It almost looks like a boxing match out here. Both teams trying to feel each other out. Nobody really in any kind of flow. No, there, there's a lot of action, but not a lot of scoring right now. And again, I, I think that's just uh, first game jitters down here and the adrenaline flowing. I think they'll settle down a little bit. I think that's a good point. The rhythms aren't there yet. A little bit out of sync, both teams. Yeah, because they're both getting good shots. It's just they're not putting them down. Barno wants a 15-footer, and that's way short. The rebound comes down easily to Warnell, and they've got a fast break if they can bring it on in. Baseline is not there by Gill, but the ball comes all the way back out, and now Gill will try and not buy. And a foul, or yes, a foul in the lane on Keith Gill. Third central foul against 35, Keith Gill in the second. Seem to be calling the fouls a little bit closer tonight than they were this afternoon. I don't know, maybe there's uh, a little bit more action underneath that basket uh, tonight than there was this afternoon, but uh, we're, we're having a lot of fouls called. Rich Central called off their full court press that time. Way to go hard to the hoop, huh? That's Stacy Corthen with a nice move. Corthen's a strong inside player. Yeah, at both ends of the floor because he's a fine rebounder leading the team. Minute 57 remaining here in the first quarter, and Rich Central leads it 8-7. Long jumper out front by Smith is not there. Rebound underneath. That is going to count, I believe, as Warnell worked his way down inside and got it to fall. Well, Charles Warnell is having, him, uh, having himself a very good game so far. Look how he goes up for this rebound. Very strong and powers it up. Yeah, Corthen got caught with his arm down there. He picks up his second personal of the night. You know, it's amazing. He doesn't look that strong looking at him on the shooting free throws, but, geez, he really got hit hard, and he managed to get the ball to the hoop that time. That shows some strength. Bardell makes it a three-point play. It makes it a four-point lead for Rich Central. Bardo kicks it over to Dillard, and they break the press rather easily up ahead to Corthen, who wants to test the wing, but it's shut off. See, this type of press that, that uh, Rich Central has, it's more of a, of a wear you down type of press. It, it may not be too effective right now, but if they can keep it up, I think what they hope to do is tire the other team out, and then they'll start making some mistakes. Cobb was a little bit short on that, but we'll have traveling called as Rich Central's Maurice Rayford comes down with a rebound but couldn't keep his feet on the hard court. He was bumped coming down, just incidental contact. Clayton Greer will kick it in for the Terriers. This is Greer on the wing, looking inside. Portham not there. Dillard tries, and that ball will end up in press row, and they say it's last touch by Carbondale. That's kind of a wild pass that time. And we're going to see a couple of substitutions coming in now. For Car Carbondale. Carbondale is still rotating between the 3 2 zone, the man to man. Now they're in a man. This is Gill, and that'll come out of there. Rebound, Warnell again. Boy, Ron Brower's sure glad he came to the game tonight, I'll tell you. He's keeping him in the game so far. Timeout on the floor. It's Central in front by 6 13 7. One of your network sponsors is Country Companies and Shore. Rich Central's Charles Warnell has 11 of his team's 13 points, and this is why. Oh, yeah, he's doing a heck of a job on the boards and then uh, putting it right back in. He's, uh, he's the best they got right now, and he's giving them a lift, and uh, as soon as uh, the Gill brothers get going, I think uh, Rich Central even play better. Cardo will bring it down, kick it in the middle to Austin, who's in the ball game, but Cardo follows in how? 
And they're going to call a technical for hanging on the rim, which is a very tough call to make because there was somebody underneath of it. Right. You're supposed to be able to grab the rim if, if, if you're in danger of hurting yourself coming down. You know, we got a replay here. Kind of, I kind of thought he was. Let's see it. Boy, there's a lot of traffic in there. I think that's a that's a tough call for the official, I believe. Kendall Gill will shoot the technical free throw. And the technical call will not hurt Carbondale whatsoever. They still trail by four, though, 13-9. You know, Bardo shows us a little bit of Allstate. That's a guard that went in there and slam dunked a rebound, folks. That could give uh, Carbondale a big, big lift. Ritz Central shooting only 36% from the field, but that's good compared yeah. to Carbondale's 19. Now we got Ritz Central's delayed game. We got a little under 30 seconds. Coach all Brower likes this. Boy, Gill took it all the way down the middle, but couldn't buy anything. But guess who's there? Warnell, it won't drop. Tip is no good by Rayford. And with 17 seconds remaining, Carbondale can make this a two-point ball game. Bardo will stop and kick it back out to Sean Curtis, who checked back in moments ago. Oh, Curtis wants one from 18. He's short again. Ball tipped around. Kept alive nicely. Austin will be fouled. Somebody got a big paw in there in the lane and kept that ball alive. I don't know if it was Bardo or if it was William Cobb. Rayford is the man they call the foul on and give Tony Austin a lot of credit for keeping that ball alive and having a chance to hit a one and bonus or a two shot foul here with only one second. Well, it could have been Cobb because he has checked out of the ball game. But Austin makes good with one tick left in the first quarter clock. No, I think this has got to almost be a, a moral victory for Carbondale because they're shooting, what, 19%, and they're either going to be three or two down going into the second quarter. Yeah, I'm sure that's how Coach Doug Wooler feels about it. They'll be one point down unless somebody can heave at the distance of the court. Who wants to give it a shot? Well, Gill did his best to take out the first row of the band section. And after one quarter of play, it's Rich Central 13, Carbondale 11. One of your network sponsors is John Deere. Don't forget, following this one, we have Romeoville. I guess we could classify them as the Cinderella of this tournament. They have never even won a regional before this year. Not only did they win that, but of course the sectional, super sectional, they'll be up against Westchester St. Joseph's. Is the defense better than the offense, or is the offense just having trouble getting going here, Coach? Well, I think uh, it's a little bit of both. There's a lot of quick hands out there, but the shots that normally drop for both teams just aren't right now. And, uh, uh, geez, here we got a little bit of strategy, man. We've got uh, a little delay game by uh, by Rich, and uh, looks. I think they're still playing their man to man. This Carbondale is. Gill Smith and Gill are just out on the perimeter playing catch. As the first 30 seconds of the second quarter goes by, so it looks like they're trying to do is spread them out a little bit and then break up one of the kids in the free throw line for a little backdoor cut. And they tried it again, the ball was just knocked away. The ball was slapped away by Bardo. See, that's good, good patient defense. You can't panic when a team does that. You gotta, you gotta just get hard nosed and, and work at it. The Olympians leading by two and playing a little cat and mouse against the Terrier defense. Smith has it back in his hands and he looks like he wants to do something, but the ball is off the rim and Carbondale will have a chance to tie this ball game as Tony Austin brings down the rebound. Got a three-guard offense in there, basically, although Bardo really can't be classified as a guard by most people. A contact there that looked like Tony Austin drew the charge or created it. He is guilty of charging. There's the first quarter statistics. Shooting horrendous right now. 29% for Rich Central, 21% for Carbondale. Free throws, both teams hitting three. Rebounds in 
favor of Carbondale by two, and the turnovers are even at five. That's what the stats show. It's a toss-up, and so does the score. So it's just, I think it's just a matter of the both teams settling down a little bit. And I think what happened last time down court for Rich Central, they're in their delay game. Carbondale played good D for about 45 seconds. So then Rich Central figured, the heck, what we're going to attack anyway. So I think the, the, the mental toughness of Carbondale showed at that, at that uh, uh, little series. Maurice Rayford, who took the charge from Tony Austin, picks up his first point of the ball game and tries for two and gets it done. Rich Central by four at 15-11. Rich Central's back to pressing again. Bardo will kick it over to Curtis as they cross the timeline. What they're going to do now is post Bardo up high. See what they can get done in there. Oh, Austin almost double dribbled, now lost the handle. Bardo gets it back, looks for a teammate. Corkin is in close, can't get it. And the rebound comes down to Central, and they've got a two-on-one baby. All the way, Gill. Oh, in it. Kendall Gill just couldn't get it to fall, and I would say that Carbondale caught a break on that one. But it was good control. He got a good shot. It just wouldn't roll in for him. So many quick hands on beat. Curtis will try for his third time and miss for his third time. Running up quickly. Bobby Smith changes his mind and changes his mind again and gets too much rim. Looked like the defense kind of gave up on him and thought he was going to come back out and stud it up again, and he turned around and had a wide open 15-footer. Yeah, good, good recognition on his part again. He just didn't get the good shot to drop. I tell you, both coaches cannot complain about their shot selection. Not so far, they're getting real good shots at this now. Austin in traffic carries it. Tony Austin. With his first field goal of the night, four on the evening. Gill with a bounce pass, a dangerous one into Rayford, and we've got charging call. No basket. Rayford got the ball to fall off the glass, but in front of him was Tony Austin. And that's the rule, Coach. If there's a charge, no basket, no matter what time it left your hands. He's planted. Or is oh, it? I don't know. <laughs> well, tell me what uh, you think. <laughs> I, uh, I, I I would be right than if I was uh, Ron Brown. I didn't think he had position. But see, that's why that's not an official. You look at two people can look at a replay and uh, see it differently. That's. Uh, you know, that's why uh, the judge and the officials with those replays, I don't think, are any good. Well, Barta was way off, but Greer was right close inside and couldn't get it to fall. Now he'll kick it back outside, and they'll set up the offense with Curtis. Bardo, yeah. Nice touch. Steve Bardo. The thing you like about that for Bardo is that he missed a shot badly, and he came right, right. back and went right back after it again. That's a shooter's mentality. He just come after you. Well, those are your, your, your good kids are always like that. I mean, they can miss a shot or make a mistake and bounce back five seconds later and do something positive. They don't let mistakes get them down. The shot by the All-Stater ties this contest at 15 with 4.30 remaining here before intermission arrives. Again, they'll weave out front and try to draw out that defense of the Terriers. Kendall Gill gets the ball from his brother, Keith. Warnell and Rayford wait patiently along each side of the lane down there on the offense. Kind of game you can save your strength for. Well, you just wonder if if Coach Brower uses this to let his team uh, take a breather. Because remember, they only play five guys. Yeah. And with that, all that pressing they do, uh, maybe this is their relaxed time. Kind of a, like a break on the court. Right, right. Uh, it could be a very smart play, because we uh, commented before about how five guys could play an up-tempo game the whole game. Maybe this is how he gets it done. Well, I know in, in three of their games, they had 97, 100, and 120. I don't think they were bringing the cops out in that one. <laughs> no rest. And some of the fans here at the assembly hall voicing their disapproval of this. And now it looks like Rich Central will try. They really haven't even looked inside so far. They've taken about a minute and a half off the clock with this. The fans that are disapproving, disapproving are all the carbon dips. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> the Rich Central fans are cheering in the back. It all depends on who you're for. We are at 2.45 remaining in the first half. 15-15 our score. 
Central's not in foul trouble, are they? Maybe, uh, is he trying to protect somebody in foul trouble? No? Well, I, I know he likes to do this. This is part of his game plan, so this is not unusual. It's not like uh, he saved this for downstate or anything. He's used it many, many times. Closing in on 2-10 now. Bobby Smith looked inside that time as Kendall Gill cut across the lane, but nothing shaking. Well, that time Steve Bartle came out a little bit to challenge, and then they, they saw an opening in the lane, and somebody cut to it. So, you know, they've got a, an offense to run. They're just waiting for Carbondale to make a mistake, and, and Carbondale has been very, uh, uh, very disciplined just so far, and, and they're not falling for it. Well, this can be very frustrating if you're on defense, but if you're tied in the ball game, you're saying, well, so what? Okay. Right. We'll right. Play it's not out. like you're five down or yeah. ten down. You know, you don't have to panic. And now a foul by Bardo, and I don't think he wanted to do that because Rich Central in the bonus situation. He, I think he just got a little frustrated at that point and said, let's make something happen here. Got a little tired of watching him dribble the ball, I guess. But I think that's where the mental discipline's got to come in. You got to uh, sure that you're a little frustrated with that, but you got to stay down in that defensive stance and play it tough. Kendall Gill has yet to score in this game, and now he's on the board. Gill, who averages 21. He's led his team in scoring 23 times in the 30 games they've played. And he's got a pair. And we've got a timeout on the floor. Carbondale trails Rick Central by two. One of your network sponsors is ME44 Romano. Three minutes of basketball. This was the only action to speak of. A foul by Steve Bardo. A very obvious foul, too. That's why we said it was maybe a little bit out of frustration. You know, we're talking about this delay game. I'll tell you, knowing Ron Brower like I do, uh, he's got a good, very good reason for it. Uh, it's, you know, we can speculate a little bit, but he knows what he's doing, and he's coached this team for, what, 30 games. So uh, he's, got, he's got a game plan in mind. He's just doing what he wants. Well, they came in at 29-1, so they must have been doing something right. Bardo out front, over to Corthen. Going to come right back out to Curtis now. He's trying to find an opening. Curtis has put up three shots here in the first half. And all have come up short. He's been right on, though. He's straight on. He's just a little short with him. He's got to give him a little bit more oomph. Bardo to Greer on the baseline. He's hemmed in. Kicks it out to Curtis. And he traps him. his feet. And he can't believe it, but it happened. A minute two remaining in the first half, and there are 32 points on the board total. No, I haven't coached too many high school kids who admit their mistakes, though, so I don't think that's an <laughs> unusual reaction. Yeah, that seems to, seems to be kind of a human condition, you know, not, not a lot of, course, of people. I admit all mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've heard that. Again, we see the same tactic employed by Rich Central, and that is a little three-guard weave out front with Smith and the Gills. And Carbondale's filled with the Gills with this tactic. I don't know. But they can't come out and commit a, an atrocious foul as they did last time and give up two points at the free throw line. So they're just playing for the last shot now. Yeah. It'll be interesting what Coach Willard wants to do with this if they if they decide to do it the second half. I mean, he has to make a decision. Is he going to stay back like he has been? Is he going to come out and pressure a little bit more? You know, what's down here they're trapping? Ronnie Jamison is in the game. He's underneath the basket, and now we've got a foul out front as Bobby Smith was pinched in by Austin and Bardo. And Bardo picked up the personal. That's his second foul, right? Second is correct. Well, both sides, Rich Central has gone to the deep freeze. They end up at the free throw line. Well, that's what you want. Smith trying to give his team a three-point lead, which doesn't happen, but the rebound comes out to Jamison. And with nine seconds left, they can fire it up again. Gil to Smith. Smith down the lane, out of control, picked up by Bardo. Two, one, stop. Well, he used all the clock that, he could get. That was great recognition of how much time was left. We are at halftime. Our score, Rich Central, 17, Carbondale, 15. One of your network sponsors is the American Dairy Association of Illinois. We'll have 
semifinal games tomorrow where all four teams will have records of 30 wins and one losses. That's never happened in the 78-year history of the state tournament. That is really astonishing when you consider what he's talking about, of course, is Manuel and King won today. Earlier, Rich Central's leading by a pair, and St. Joseph's of Westchester is then coming in at 29-1 and one also. These are some excellent teams. How's the tournament changed over the years? Well, I think that the, the level of competition has just gotten unbelievably good um, in both the A and the double A tournaments. The, the when the teams come down here, they're prepared. They know what they're doing. Switching defenses. The kids know where they have to be and, and what they have to do all the time. This year's double A tournament has some unbelievable individuals playing for some really great teams uh, in this game tonight. We've got two two players who are all staters of both of them are coming to the University of Illinois. Uh, they're major college players. Jim Flynn, always a pleasure to see you. Thank you very much, Frank. Thank you. Jim Flynn of the IHSA will be back at the Assembly Hall in just a moment. Right now, one of your network sponsors is John Deere. It looked like a good block. Uh, he, he got his hand on the ball, but the referee called him for the body. That's not the, a good angle to see the body foul, but that's what the official called. No, because from that angle, all you see is the elbow from the offensive player. But again, we're not underneath. Austin finally ends that rich central run. It's now 25-18, Carbondale trailing by seven and trying to cut into it a little further with this man's free throw. Twenty-five nineteen, the Olympians over the Terriers. Carbondale could use another defensive stop here for some momentum. Bobby Smith. Takes it over to Gill. Gill in a lot of traffic. Makes a nice pass out. Smith and Gill playing catch along the wing against that zone. Now they get it in the middle. Warnell turns. Got too much of the right side of the rim. And there's that defensive play you were talking about. I think they got the shot they wanted. Just then they got a terrible pass. Warnell picks it up, and he makes a bad pass. Saved by Bardo. He puts it away in the middle. Picked up by Corthen. He fires and hits. Finally got that bank shot to drop for him. It was a little bit softer. <laughs> I don't know if anybody deserved that basketball after that was that exchange. But both teams in a hurry to get the ball down into the offensive court. Gill stops. He is not fouled. Nice block, they say, by Cobb. So Cobb with the block for Carbondale, and the Terriers can cut it to two suddenly. With a hoop, it's a two-point game. Austin charging. I don't think you're going to hear a gripe about that ball. It's pretty obvious. It was right in front of us as Keith Gill planted himself. It's right in front of Coach Willard, too, and he didn't say anything, so you know it had to be a good one. Now he's got a great position. He just he took a good shot, I'll tell you. Yeah, I think the elbow caused him to charge there, not necessarily the position of the feet on the defensive man. Gill all the way down, pretty move, but it won't fall, but he will be fouled. Keith Gill just kept going and going and going, and finally sliced down and tried to put it off the backboard. Well, once he snuck through the two-time, they had a, I think they had a three-on-two break, and he just said it was very under control, and they didn't stop, so he went to the hoop. Ball goes against William Cobb, and that is his second of the night. Keith Gill is really twinkle quick. He just zips through the defenders, and he's got a nice ability to avoid the contact. Boy, his lip is really cut. Yeah, I think that happened during that charging call. I'm not sure if it happened then, but it looked like he was holding the lip when he got up there. That's one of those injuries. It doesn't hurt that much. Now he'll bleed all over his uniform, and it'll just look great for all the fans back at the at the school. Gill gets that one to drop. We are talking about Gill on the offense driving. There's three minutes. See, nobody came in to pick him up. Yeah, nice control, though, on the dribble again. Yeah. And Gill gets him both, so central back to a six-point edge. And now there is a substance on the ball that Greer didn't like, so they simply exchange basketballs. You can't beat that. Three-quarter pressure now applied by Rich Central, but breaking it nicely. In the middle, they go to Greer, out to Corthen, and they'll just look for Bardo, and he'll not get it. 
And a foul underneath on Cobb, and that's three on in. Well, he was just looking to get position, I think, and anticipating a missed shot, and then uh, the official called him for uh, elbowing or pushing out. Well, fans who have watched Steve Bardo play all year know he can make that shot rather easily. He's 6'6", and it may look like he's out of his range, but that is not the case. No, and it, it, it's, he seems to be mystified why it's not going in. It looks good when he releases it. It's just not dropping. And we're back to our uh, delay game here, man. It's the same three players out in front, the Gill brothers and Bobby Smith, and Olympians just put some time off that clock. They almost a foul there on Greer as he tried to take the steal, and now double dribble called on Keith Gill. Well, that stall backfired. Well, it's not going to work all the time, that's for sure, but I think they're still on the positive side with uh, with using it. But I'll tell you, there's nothing like a turnover or a steal to, to maybe change the coach's mind about it. That was a good no call. The fans were reacting to that, but that, that's not a problem. Yeah, they broke the press rather easily that time by getting it in the middle to Greer, and now playing with it out front is Austin. Greer yeah. doesn't want that shot. See, I think that's the shot they should take and have to hit. Maybe they should run Barlow down to the baseline. Well, we talked about his range moment, moments ago, and Steve Bardo tells us, you guys were right. I can hit it from out here. So the 16-footer makes it a four-point ball game, and Rick Central cuts that ball. Bardo with a good defensive play, and they say it went off the fingertips of Bobby Smith. That's a real tough play to make when a ball is deflected. You're coming at you to try to get that hand out of the way. Timeout on the floor. Good Central 27, Carbondale 23. One of your network sponsors is John Deere. It was 17-15 at halftime, Rich Central in front. They have upped that by two, leading 27-23. Both clubs have hit just nine field goals on the night so far. Carbondale, nine of 34 for 26%. Rich Central, nine of 26 for 34%. 235 remaining here in the third quarter as Carbondale works it around. Bardo, triple team, gets it nicely to Greer down the middle. His shot is rejected. Bardo gets it back and he's fouled. Nice pass by Bardo that time. Did you notice where they had Bardo? We just commented that that, uh, that baseline shot was open, and all of a sudden he wound up there. But you know the defense all of a sudden. Maurice Rayford picked up the foul. That's his fourth on the net. That's a good call. He got him on the arm. Bardo gets his eighth point of the night. I think he's finding his rhythm on that shot. Sure looks a lot better. This one's a little too hard, but the rebound comes down to Greer back up. And it Clayton Greer with a nice offensive rebound off the free throw, and suddenly it's a one-point ball game. Rich Central with the lead in the basketball. They're working around out front. Gill penetrating. Nobody picks him up, but he doesn't make him pay the price. And the rebound nicely saved by Cobb and Bardo. They can take the lead here. Greer off the glass. They do. Greer is at six points here in the third quarter, and now a foul on Bardo, and that's not what they wanted. No, I think that's his fourth, too, and you... Boy, he was just getting into the game offensively. A very bad foul. And he was just getting into the game after yeah. that basket by Greer. Uh, Bardo pointed to Keith Gill as if to say, hey, we're here, man, we're here. And then suddenly he goes up court about 15 feet later and makes what coaches like to refer to as a dumb foul, I yeah. believe. I think that's a good observation. I think he was going after Keith Gill a little bit. They were banging each other pretty hard, and they had a little competitive spirit going there, and that's what it, why he committed a foul a half a mile from the basket, <laughs> and he has to sit down. So now Gill will get a chance to get even as if helping Bardo pick up his fourth foul wasn't enough. Free throw will get the kind roll. 28s are on both sides of the scoreboard. Well, we have two people in foul trouble now. I'm not, you know, it, it, it seems obvious that Bardo's foul trouble is, is a lot more important to Carbondale. But when you think of the fact that Rich Central's only got five players, anybody that they get in foul trouble is important. 
Looked like Warnell almost got a spectacular tip on that one, but Cobb grabbed it away. Now they go down to Cobb. He fakes, pumps, puts it up. It won't roll down. A lot of contact, and coming down with it is Gill. Gill up quickly. Ahead to his brother, who spots Rayford over on the other side. And Rich Central, with a nice transition game, leads it 30-28. Everybody on the team there looked up the court well and caught the open man. Cobb on the balance, tough shot. Ball heading out of bounds. He gets it back, partially blocked by Warnell. Kendall Gill in a hurry. Will he stop? No, the ball is taken out of his hands, but a foul. And I think that one will be on Sean Curtis. What a game of contrast. Huh? We, we sit here watching them, the delay game, and then all of a sudden they're racing up and down the court, both teams. It's really kind of a fun game that way. Well, Sean Curtis and William Cobb are both there in the lane, but they say Cobb is the man who got his hands on the wrist, and that is his fourth personal foul, and you can see that Coach Douglas Woolard isn't real happy with the change of events there. Gill's got one of those shooter's wrists. You can almost hear it snap every time he lets it go. It sure looks good. Very loose arm. Central trying to go back up by four, and they did. Well, Central was down by one just moments ago, and now we are at one minute left in the third quarter, working against the pressure. Curtis does a nice job of it. See, breaking this press is going to be a little bit tougher for Carbondale now with Bardo sitting down. Looking inside for Corthen, but he is warmed over. Now a takeaway by Gill. Kendall all the way. Count him up. And it looks like Rich Central has the same characteristic as Peoria, Manuel, and King, that explosiveness. And knocked away from behind, but right to Greer, who gets it to go, but the ball a charge. A charge on Greer. Tough call to make. And instead of being a down by only four, they're still down by six. Well, it was certainly a smart defensive play. It was a two-on-one break there, and that's about all he could do is hope for the charge, and he got it. Yeah, when you slow it down, I guess it wasn't that tough a call to make at all. The man firmly had established position. With 23 seconds left, let's see if the Olympians want to play a little eat the clock inside Warnell. That's a pretty shot. <laughs> Charles Warnell spinning and hitting, and it's an eight-point ball game, and in a hurry is Carbondale. Austin better hurry. Six seconds. Out front to Curtis. He'll fire. Not there. This corner is history. Rich Central leading this ball game with eight minutes left to play, 36-28. And one of your network sponsors is the American Dairy Association of Illinois. Just as suddenly as Carbondale caught Rich Central, Rich Central turned it back on and a couple of turnovers and a key charging call got well, it done. I think the key play of the whole the whole quarter was Bartle's fourth foul. As soon as he went out, uh, Rich Central made a run at him and scored some quick points. Now Bartle's back in the game, which I think is a great move. He's got to be in there. Well, he'll have to play eight minutes with only one foul to give. Gill drove down the lane and couldn't get the little finger roll to come down, right? So Carbondale can come down and try to close the gap somewhat. But Bardo's got to watch out now for is driving down that lane and picking up the fifth on the offensive charge. Ball knocked away right into the hands of Bobby Smith. Those quick hands of Gill. Look at Smith all the way. That should be two, but it's too hard. Cobb has the rebound. Nice effort, nonetheless. He's got that, I don't know what it is, on his left hand for his little finger, but I, it's, it's altering his shot a little bit, and I, that caused the miss, I think, down there. Bardot with a weave, and boy, he was close to picking it up. He got fouled out front before he knocked down Maurice Rayford. Here's the stats through three quarters, at least the shooting percentage for Rich Central growing somewhat more respectable, 12 to 31 for 39%. Yeah, I think if we eliminate that first quarter, uh, that it probably is a very respectable percentage. Carbondale, on the other hand, just 27%. Six of eight from the line for the Terriers, 12 of 19 for Rich Central. Turnover-wise, Carbondale has 14, Rich Central 11. There's that open shot again. Down low is Cobb. He gets it blocked. Gets it back. Score. 
but it stay with him. Charles wanted now put it right back in his face, and Cobb said, well, as long as I'm here, one more time won't hurt any. You know what's tough on this defense Carbondale's playing is they got Bardo out front playing the point on this trap. And geez, he's right out in front of everybody. So whatever he does, if he commits that foul or comes close to it, the official's going to be standing right there. Rayford all the way across court to Bobby Smith. Gill, no, that's Warnell. Warnell. Nice little fadeaway from about 13. In the middle, Austin kicks it off nicely. And that is two for Stacy Corfin. 38-32, Rich Central. I think the pass from Bardo made the play because they had him two-timed. He split the two-time and got the ball to the open man, and they had a three-on-two break. He's very important to him, even when he's not shooting. With six minutes left, they go along the baseline and now kick it back out via Gill. No, inside to Warnell again. This time he's off a little bit, and Corthen has the rebound. He didn't, he didn't turn and square up that time. He kind of shot off balance. Austin driving, stopping, 10-footer, rolls off. Strong rebound by Rich Central. Uh-oh. And let's see who's down there. It looks like somebody may have hurt in the knee. He might have get banged his shin the way he's holding it. It's Kendall Gill, but he looks like he'll be able to walk that off. Austin pulling up with a jumper, just couldn't get it to fall, and then, of course, you see there the off-balance. Ooh. Yeah. He just, it, I don't know what happened. He just lost his footing there. Steve Bardo makes that shot, and now we have another injured player. Looks like somebody might have gotten the air knocked out of him. Boy, things either happen very slowly during this game, or they happen rapidly, one right after another. It's kind of hard to keep track. Bobby Smith will be all right. Of course, that's easy for us to say after he takes the blow. <laughs> you didn't get kicked. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, it shows Bardo's importance to the Carbondale team. He's got him back within four. Yeah, Bardo now with 10 on the night. I was still watching the replay. I didn't really see how he uncorked that one. Gill comes all the way across to his brother. And back he goes down to Gill. Tip, no good. Good defense down there by Carbondale. There are a couple very good pass fakes that time. I don't know if uh, you noticed it, but you, uh, with this trapping defense, you fake one way and get the defense leaning that way and then and then go back to uh, where the defense was. Very good execution that time by Rich. Number 35 is Keith Gill, the younger brother of number 13, Kendall Gill. Ball taken away by Cobb. There was a good example of not a pass fake. He just he telegraphed his pass, and of course the defense stuck his hand in there and got the ball. Carbondale can make this a two-point affair. Bardo looks over to Austin, drops it off to Greer, and he traveled with a basketball. Or did he? Yeah, he traveled. It was too. He got must a timeout. have timeout on the floor. So Carbondale passes up the opportunity. They trail by four. One of your network sponsors is Amabin. Anybody who knows how hard these young men have worked, hate to see them come down here and have an off night in front of such a large audience, but there's no doubting that they have found themselves with an off night, but right now what counts is not what has happened in the past, but what will happen in the next four minutes and 53 seconds. Gill tries to put it inside. Cobb picks it off after a teammate slapped it away. Field goal percentage, Central at 36, Carbondale at 31. Bardo may have picked up the foul, or did he? He's gone. He's gone. Oh, what a big play. I mentioned it two minutes ago. The thing you got to worry about is picking up the offensive charge, and now with 4.42 left. The young man who did it was Maurice Rayford, Rayford and he had four fouls himself, so somebody was leaving the game. But as you said earlier, it's probably more vital to Carbondale to be minus a Bardo than it is a Rich Central, yeah? There, there's no question about it. He is, uh, he's their, the best they've got, and he's their leader, and uh, this is really going to hurt. And the shame of that is that may be Steve Bardo's last play as a high school basketball player. He can hope that his Carbondale Terrier mates come back and give him another day, but right now they're down by four. Well, now what he, I think he's got to do is shake that off, and he's got to, he can still be a leader on the bench, and he can encourage his teammates in there because they're only four down, and there's some, uh, a little under five minutes to go. So all is not lost. Cobb with good pressure out front. He almost thrown away, but Gill makes a nice save in the corner. 
Bobby Smith with a hard pass over to Kendall Gill. And they go inside. Ball overthrown. Smith picks it up and scores. That's the uh, how rather be lucky. <laughs> that pass was for no one. So Bobby Smith said, gee, I think I'll pick it up and slam it home. And six points is what Rich Central leads this ball game by. Knocked away by Gill. Count them up. Kendall Gill with the steal and the slam. And Rich Central is up by eight with four minutes left to go. We'll be back, but first, one of your network sponsors is John Deere. Just moments after Carbondale lost Steve Bardo to five fouls, this happens. Well, once the deflection ma is made, uh, the rest is pretty easy. As he dribbles down, he's going to dunk the ball. You ever do that? <laughs> no, I, mean, I never got close to the rim. <laughs> There's Joe again, one-on-one. -on -one. Will he look or go? He'll go in, count, and a foul against. Great smooth move to the hoop. A, a foul against Carbondale, and this one might just be over, although there is 350 remaining. The finger roll that he puts on here is really something special, as he really had an eye for the rim. You're about to see why Kendall Gill is an All-Stater. So smooth. And again, it seemed like he changed directions while it was in the air. Number 30, Burt Simon is in the ball game now for Carbondale. As we have a foul on Rich Central. That'll be against Keith Gill. We've said it before, but I can't uh, emphasize this enough that, that Bardo meant so much to this Carbondale team. And I don't mean just in points, just in leadership. Just being out on the floor, I think they're they're a much better team because the, the, the players from Carbondale just seem down right now. You know, they've had mental lapses. That's why you throw the ball away on the press, and they've done that two, three times in a row now. Simon getting his first playing time at State. He's a 6'1 junior. Look at that free throw, one handy. Had the right result. Who used to shoot one handed free throws in the NBA? Was it Oscar Robinson? Don Nelson, wasn't it? Yeah, Don, that's right. Don did it. Frank used to do it in baseball. <laughs> the peach basket. <laughs> there it is again. Not the same result this time. Rebounding as Rayford, and he is fouled by Austin. Boy, Rayford's played very well for having four fouls. Yeah, well, Keith Gill just picked up his fourth foul a couple of seconds ago, too, but that situation seems to be lessening because it's central up by nine with time on their side. The four fouls doesn't seem that important when you're nine up. For sure. And don't forget tomorrow, starting at 11 o'clock, Peoria Emanuel, Chicago King, 30 and one each. Rich Central on their way to joining that group of 30 and one teams. Rayford misses the free throw, and Kendall Gill picks up the personal. You know, I'd pay to see that game tomorrow. <laughs> I would. <laughs> it should be something special. And I'll tell you, you know, there's a lot of, uh, quite a few empty seats around here. If, if, if people are watching at all, but they should get their, themselves down here because I think it's going to be a great day of basketball tomorrow. Yeah, we have yet to see St. Joe's because they are about to take on Cinderella after this game in Romeoville. And don't count Romeoville out yet just because St. Joe's. You know, I think that was the kind of bad foul for Rich Central. This is not what they need. They, what they want is, is let the clock go, uh, uh, let them play against their half-court D, and, and uh, but send them to the line for, for easy scoring chances is not uh, uh, what Coach Brower wants. Well, Simon now is one out of three from the free throw line. And it looks like Rich Central will say, no, maybe not. Gill all the way down. Nice bounce pass underneath him. There's Warnell. Excellent pass. You know, I think maybe Carbondale thought they were going to go out and roll them to sleep and take some time off the clock, and suddenly Gill said, zip. Hello. Frank Bassoni almost makes the one-handed grab. <laughs> Rich Central leading at 46-35. Timeout on the floor, 319 remaining. Carbondale called the timeout, and I, they just had one, but I think Coach Willard is being smart. He's got 
he's got one chance, and that's to settle his team team down and and start playing some basketball again. And uh, there is the matchup for tomorrow morning on your screen now: Peoria Emanuel's Rams and the Chicago Martin Luther King Jaguars. The both teams are quick. Of course, King the bigger of the two teams with that powerhouse front line that Peoria Emanuel showed today that they're out to uh, play with anybody. And coming up in just a few moments after this game is over, it'll be Romeoville and Westchester St. Joe. And you talk about quickness, you'll see another great basketball player and team, uh, a couple of great teams, but the famous Tony Freeman from St. Joseph's, a five foot seven, when you can uh, be considered to play in the Big Ten, you got to be something special. It'll be interesting to see that Peoria Manuel Chicago King game tomorrow because, as you mentioned today, Manuel has never been out rebounded in a basketball game, and even though they don't possess a lot of size, boy, they, they leap when they get out of bed. Bobby Smith plays the ball right in front of us and then comes back and gets it. Carbondale has changed their defense. It's a man to man right now. Smith looking to eat a little clock off. He'll go down to Rayford and kick it back out front. Carbondale's, if you haven't already guessed it, definitely under the gun at this point. Three minutes left to go. Smith pulls up and hits it. Uh, finger didn't bother that shot. That one looked good. Rich Central is so quick that when you spread out and they spread you out, that you got a lot of one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and that's when they shine. Well, they get they get a good two time on the ball, and then you, you don't have time to look and to fake like you should. And and like you said, if you spread out a little bit, then the ball's in the air that much longer, and that gives their quick kids time to get in there and, and, uh, and steal it. On the negative side for Rich Central, that's the third foul they've committed in the last 30 or 40 seconds. And that's not going to help the clock because the clock is the enemy of Carbondale now. However, Carbondale is not connecting on the free throws that they're given, so Rich Central is getting off the hook. That last foul on Kendall Gill, his second of the ball game. Smith between the legs. I just think mentally when Bartle fouled out, it really hurt Carbondale, and then they just haven't been the same team since. Gill, a little bit short. Hit. By, I believe that was Warren Allen there, but he couldn't get it to fall. But every second that goes by now means Rich Central is closer to playing either St. Joe's or Romeoville, and we've got traveling call on the way up court on the Terriers. And there is Douglas Woolard, who came down here last year and had the same thing happen to him, made the Elite Eight and went no further. But just to make the Elite Eight. Oh, that's a, that's a great, great accomplishment. Consider all the coaches and all the teams. Uh, a steal by Austin, and he'll pay it up. With two minutes to go, he'll cut the margin to 11. I tell you, I don't feel sorry for anybody who loses today. I feel sorry for all those that are home watching on TV or in the stands or sitting here talking about it. Oh, Bobby Smith with a pretty pass to Rayford. We've seen enough behind the back action today to last us for a while. I think we can see why Coach Brower says Bobby Smith is their key. He really does a nice job setting up their offense and getting the ball to the right people. This is Greer. That's two. Carbondale desperately trying to come back, but they still trail by 11. Trading points won't do it anymore. A minute 30 remaining. Go out here, I mean, there is no matter how good defensively Carbondale is, they cannot stay with the likes of Bobby Smith and Gill out front. They're just too quick with that first step and they slide by them. And if you double team them, you know what happens. Yeah, well, I, right now, I think it's academic. I think uh, Carbondale is, is down and then they're a beaten team right now. And, and, uh, is this the hardest time to coach when you're down by 11? And you, you know in your mind it might be academic, but you can't say that to your kids. No, you want them to keep battling, but and they're trying hard. I'm not, they're not standing still out there. It's not that they're not trying, but mentally I think they're 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 beaten, and that's they don't have that little extra zip in their defense, and I think that's the difference. Keith Gill getting most of his points from the Lions tonight. He now has seven on the evening. Traveling on Sean Curtis. I think he dragged, he dragged the pivot foot. Well, Rich Central certainly isn't letting him off the hook. They're still pitching up in the corners. Well, that's the way he plays all the time, and, and I guess he's not going to change right now. So it appears that at least three 30-1 teams will be alive tomorrow for the Dream. 
Gill kicks it off to Rayford. Nice defensive play that time by Simon. Central had all year. Oh, what a move. What a move. And I think we may have an elbow in the eye. The ball will fall. Bobby Smith is getting up very, very slowly. Foul will go against Sean Curtis. I think you're going to see one of the better fouls of the tournament right there. He really got smacked. Smith almost lost the ball. He got hit by two Ooh. people. Simon got him for good. Yeah. I don't know how the ball went through the hoop. That was great concentration by the shooter. Holy smokes. And this is the biggest lead of the ball game now for Rich Central. They're setting on a 15-point bulge. And here comes the rest of the bench for Carbondale. You know, I think this is great by both coaches. Uh, the guys who sit on the bench work hard all year, too. And now this game is really over score-wise or who's going to win. So they're going to let everybody get a chance just to have a taste of uh, what Assembly Hall is all about. Scott Brigham is in the ball game for Carbondale, as is Aaron Stern. Stearns wears number 20. Mark Diamond wearing number 24, also in the ball game. Brad Dillard is in there. And Chris Hartley, number 44. Those are the substitutions for Coach Doug Woolard. Free throw miss, but Hill almost put it back down. Under a minute now. Time running down in Carbondale for the season, but what a season it was for him. A lot of folks didn't think they'd ever get this far. Coming in at 21 and 7. Tony Parks now checking into the ball game as Kendall Gill exits. He's a good one. Inbound attack, Scott Brigham. Yes, Scott Brigham. There's a shot you can tell the grandkids about in about 30 years. All you knew though is say it was a tie game when you made it. That's what you said. Well, over the years, uh, the, the, it'll change. Three seconds. That way. Bobby Smith called for three seconds in the lane, or at least one of his mates was, so we'll come the other way. Don't go away, because Frank Pisoni will be back with a play-by-play -play of the St. Joe ball game, and he's going to have a fun time keeping up with a 5-7 Dynamo. See the Red Central kids, they're all smiling right now. They're all subs. Uh, hardly ever get a chance to play, and they're, they're really going to love this 35 Whoa, seconds. look out. Greg Glaze checking into the ball game now for Rich Central. Ronnie Jamison also in there. We should have a hoop in front of us. There's more balls coming in. <laughs> That's the third best. one. Robert Rustpress also in the ball game. And Dwayne Dowell, 45, checked in. Ball batted loose. Coming down with it is Carbondale. On the run is Brigham. 19 seconds left. Dillard fires it across the lane, and I believe Mark Diamond will get a shot at a free throw here because he was fouled on the play. Diamond will go to the line, and the foul on that one was on Ronnie Jamison. Well, Rich, Rich Central had a tough time, and they... Went to some unusual strategy in the second quarter by putting the ball in the deep freeze. Although, Coach, every time they did that, they came up with free throws or points. In effect, what they did was stall the ball for four minutes and get four points. Right. And Carbondale came up empty. Yeah, and, and it would have backfired on them once, I think, in the uh, third quarter, wasn't it? But, uh, you know, another's going to work every time. That's Ten seconds. As I said, Coach Brown had a reason for it. Now we got scrambled eggs out here as the <laughs> substitute's really trying to leave their mark at the assembly hall. It's a little wild about this time. Yeah, you're right about that. I mean, what you say about substitutes, yeah, you hear that all the time. And sports announcers say, well, they, you know, they deserve it. But if you've ever played basketball at any level, you know that the guys you don't see in the game are crucial to your game plan. I mean, they have to run that offense or that particular defense. And that's why I think when you get an opportunity, you have to let them play, especially down here. So Carbondale gets a free throw from Brad Dillard. 
And they are down by 11, trying to make it a 10-point deficit, which Dillard can't do. Ball tipped around, tipped around. Finally brought down by Rick Central. It's back in the hands of Scott Brigham. He'll shoot and not score. This ball game is in the books. We are now down to five teams remaining in Champaign. Five teams as Rick Central and Carbondale have decided who will go to the quarterfinal next step, which will be the semifinals in the morning. Actually, they'll play in the afternoon after the Peoria Emanuel King game. But the final here, Rich Central 54, Carbondale 43. And coach, when we look back at the keys, you got to start with Steve Bardo following up. Yeah, there's no question about it. You know, we've said that many times, and I, and I, probably our listeners are getting sick of it, but uh, it's just true. That's the that was the key play of the game when he fouled out, when he picked up his fourth foul, and finally when he fouled out. One of your network sponsors is Country Companies Insurance. The one on the campaign, Coach Geiston. The man who really keyed things early and kept Rick Central in this ball game was a guy named Charles Warnell, who was just tenacious on the offensive boards, especially he scored 11 points out of their 17 in the first half and ended up with a game-high 17 for Rich Central. And then who came out in the second half? Kendall Gill, right? Yes, sir. And, uh, and so Warnell, Warnell did his job early, and when Gill got finally got in the game, he did it at a great second half, and that was the key. Yeah, Gendall, Kendall Gill only had two points in the first half, both from the free throw line, but he finishes with 14 and had a couple of key steals down that stretch, especially when Bardot left. It seemed like he got free reign out there on defense. Yeah, well, he just got himself into the game a lot more, and, and whether it was uh, rebounding, uh, passing, stealing, whatever, uh, he just got into the game. And I think that's the type of uh, game he's going to have all the time. Taking a look at some of the other individuals on Rich Central, Keith Gill, Kendall's brother, scored seven points here tonight. Bobby Smith had a fine game, especially toward the end when they spread it out. He finishes with 10 points on the evening. Maurice Rayford, you like the way he played. Well, I like the way he played with four fouls. I yeah. thought he did a heck of a job. And he's the one who picked up the fifth foul on, uh, in Bar on Bardo. So uh, he uh, had a, a great impact on the game, even though he only scored, what, six? Maurice Rayford was six. And as we told you, Warnell was 17. Before we go to the team stats, let us check Carbondale. Clayton Greer had eight. William Cobb had two. Stacy Corthen had 10. Steve Bardo had 10. That's 11 under his seasonal average. But again, he was saddled with foul trouble and finally did foul out with over four minutes left in this contest. Tony Austin came off the bench with eight. Brad Dillard had one. Albert Simon had one. Scott Brigham had two. And Mark Diamond had one. And there you have the scoring as Rich Central moves on. And a lot of folks think it'll be St. Joe, but I guess we should just kind of wait and see about that. Uh, I would. I think we've had some great games all day, and uh, it's going to be an, uh, a great one coming up. Let's look at the team statistics here. Both teams got off to horrible shots field goal-wise from the field. Rich Central tried to ride itself, and from their start, 44% is not bad at all. 20, no. 20 of 46 for 44%, 17 of 49 for only 35% for Carbondale, and they'll remember that when they go back home. 14 of 24 from the line for Rich Central. That is only 58%, not that great a night free throw shooting by both teams either no and then the turnovers i think were the a very big key turnover wise 22 for carbondale 17 for rich central carbondale actually won the rebound battle but lost the war here tonight 37 29 right now let's go to frank fasoni on the assembly hall floor frank thank you very much jim and we're with mo tharp the head basketball coach of palatine friend Congratulations, first of all, on a great year at Palatine. Well, thanks, Frank. It was really a fun year for us, and our kids really played well this year. Talk about a little bit uh, about the Rich Central team that, that you played earlier and compare how they played when you saw them and when you played them and tonight. Well, you know, I, I think Carbondale did a pretty good job with them. The thing that we couldn't do against them is fight the pressure and break the press. And, you know, they're a very quick team. And I think once they start scoring the points in great bunches, you know, that's when they really go. And when Bartow fouled out tonight, you know, they were up four points. And then, you know, within a minute, they had it to 11. And that's kind of the type of team they are. And they can really take advantage of you in a very short period of time. Talk about Kendall Gill, the 6'3 guard who's headed for the University of Illinois. Well, I, you know, I definitely think Kendall is an all-state player from what I saw. Uh, you know, I had not seen him play until we played him. We had some of our assistants uh, scout them. But when he, we played him, he only scored 18 points. I think a lot of people think, well, you got to score 30 a night to be an All-Stater. But, you know, he's a complete player. He's a great passer. 
great rebounder, and he plays very good defense for him. And I think he's the guy that really complements their team and makes their team go. You know, you mentioned that he's an all-around player, and I think that's what you were referring to when Steve Bartow went out for Carbondale. It wasn't just the scoring end. Oh, absolutely. Barto is, is the kid that plays every position they need. If they need a guard, he plays a guard. If they need a forward, he plays a forward. If they need a center, he plays there. And really, when he fouled out, you know, that took so much away from their team, it was unbelievable. It's amazing, isn't it, uh, at this level, how the effect that one individual can have on a team game. Well, I think when you have players with the magnitude of Barto and a Gill, you know, certainly they do. Uh, you know, a team that's, that's really team-oriented and has five guys that are very close, it probably wouldn't matter that much. But one where you have these guys that are really superstars, and of course the reason that their teams are here is because of the magnitude of players that they are. We're going to see a game coming up in a moment between Romeoville and Westchester St. Joe, and when you talk about individual performers, you have to mention... Number 24, a 6'1 senior, Tony Parks.